What's good people? I hope you're all having a great week despite all the madness going on. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys how to make your photos look more cinematic through editing. And I'm going to be editing a couple of my photos on Adobe Lightroom and showing you the steps I go through to make my photos look more cinematic. And those of you who already follow me on Instagram will know that in recent weeks, I've adopted a more cinematic approach and style to my photos. And if you don't follow me, I'll put the link down below so you guys can catch me on there. But um, I think before we get into this episode, it's important to clarify what's meant by cinematic photography and what people mean when they say they want to edit their photos to look cinematic. Now, there's no clear definition for what is a cinematic photo. But in my opinion, it's just a shot or a photo which looks like it could have been taken straight out of a film. Let's head over to Lightroom now and I'm going to show you guys the steps I go through when editing my photos to give them that cinematic look. Okay, so we're over in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So for this episode, I'm going to edit this photo which was taken just outside Chinatown in central London. And also this photo which was taken early on a foggy morning in a local park. So before we start editing this photo, a quick heads up, I released a new preset pack which will be available on my website now and I'll have the link down below so you guys can check that out if you want. So let's get back to editing this photo and the first thing I like to do is head over to the basic adjustments and what I'm looking to do is reduce the dynamic range. So as I said earlier on in this episode, if you want that cinematic film look, you're going to want to reduce the dynamic range. And that's pretty easily done using the basic adjustment sliders. So the first thing I do is reduce the highlights all the way down. And I also will bring the whites all the way down to zero. So as you can see right now on the histogram, all of the values have shifted towards the shadows. And that's what we want when we're going for that cinematic look. Next up, I'm going to boost up the shadow slightly to balance out the image. I'm going to bring down the blacks a bit and I'm going to boost the exposure to correctly expose the image. So that looks about right. Also, I always like reducing the contrast in my images and I'm just going to bring it down to about minus 25. Afterwards, I head back up to the white balance and I'm going to shift it slightly towards the blue. Okay, so next up, we're into the tone curve and rather than do it S curve, I'm going to further reduce the dynamic range. So I'm going to place a couple points across the uh, tone curve. I'm going to bring down the shadows a bit here. So whenever I make adjustments to the tone curve, I always hold the Alt key and that just gives me a lot more control when it comes to moving the curve. So I'm going to give a slight fade to the image, about eight, seven or eight. And then I'm going to head over to the right hand side of the tone curve the highlights and bring them down slightly. So as you can see, just by making a few adjustments on the tone curve, you can further flatten the image and reduce the dynamic range and give it that cinematic look. Next up, let's head down to the colors. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the reds towards the orange. I'm gonna bring the oranges slightly more red and then move the yellows towards the orange as well. Next up, I'm going to move the blues towards the teal. I'm going to do the saturation later and move down to the luminance. So again, with the luminance, you can further reduce the dynamic range in the image. So you can see that the reds and the oranges are pretty bright. So I'm going to bring those down a bit. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the colors. And now I'm going to move down to the color grading tool. So the color grading is pretty new in Lightroom and it replaced the split toning feature. And it allows you to push colors and tones into the shadows, highlights, and midtones. And it's a lot better than the split toning because you can be a lot more specific and you have more control over the balance and the blending. So the first thing I like to do is head over to the global and I move some green into the image here. So, Okay, so next up I'm going to move over to the highlights and I'm going to make these a warmer yellowy orange. That looks about right. Next up, I'm heading into the shadows and this is where I push the blues and the uh, teal tones into the image to give it that cinematic look. And uh, I also go into the mid-tones to push some more aquas in. So this part of editing can honestly just take me hours. 
I just scan through the different hues of blues and teals until I find the exact look I'm uh, going for. And then I'm adjusting the saturation, the luminance until I find the right balance. So I'm just gonna go through right now and just play around with the colors until I find the correct mix. All right, so I'm liking the look of that so far. And what I wanna do now is head back up to the basics and make some more adjustments to bring out my subjects and add a little bit more contrast back into the image. Okay, so I'm liking the look of the grade so far. And next up, I'm gonna reduce the clarity just a bit. That's just because digital images can often appear too sharp. And if the image is too sharp, it takes away from that cinematic look. Also, I like to go a bit more into the minus when it comes to dehaze. And again, that just reduces the sharpness and takes away a bit of the contrast from the image. For this image, I'm just gonna add a bit more vibrancy and saturation in just because I like how that looks. I'm gonna come back down to the saturation for the HSL sliders, and I'm gonna reduce the blues a bit, and the aquas. I'm just play around with these colors a bit until I find the right balance. Okay, I'm also gonna head back up to the tone curve and make a few more adjustments here. So as you can see, as you're editing these photos, you gotta constantly readjust your sliders, readjust your tone curve, because when you change one part of the image, it requires you to change other parts as well. Something I found when I've been doing these uh, cinematic edits and moving the highlights and whites all the way down to zero, it means I have to boost the exposure more than I do normally. So just keep that in mind when you're doing these edits as well. Okay, so finally, to balance out the image just a bit, I'm gonna head back up to the white balance and add some uh, warmth back into this uh, image see how that looks all right so i'm liking the look of this edit so far the next thing to do is to head down to the effects i'm going to add a bit of a vignette on this and also i like adding some grain into these uh, cinematic edits as well and yeah i'm just going to make a few final touches to this image and then it's going to be done Okay, so that's the first image edited. This was the original, and here is the cinematic edit for this photo. So, as you can see, we've added a bit of teal and blue into the shadows and midtones. <clears throat> the highlights and the blacks aren't that far away. So that one, I'm happy with. Let's go over to the second uh, image I wanna edit today. And it's this photo I took in uh, a local park. It was a foggy morning, and for those of you following me on Instagram, you guys know that I put up this photo on my account a couple of weeks ago. This is actually one of my favorite photos I took in 2020. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, again, move the highlights down to zero, move the whites down to zero. All right, so back up to white balance, I'm gonna move the temperature to be a bit cooler into the blues. And I'm gonna move the uh, tint down into the greens. I'm gonna just uh, boost the vibrance and the saturation up a bit. Let's get down to the tone curve. And again, we're reducing the dynamic range. So I'm adding my points into this one. I'm gonna give it a slight fade. And then I'm gonna move down the highlights down to the midtones as well. All right, so I think the tone curve's about right. I'm gonna head down to the HSL slider. And again, I'm gonna move the blues down to the teals to give it that kind of teal, the green look. And then I'm just gonna play around with the oranges and the yellows. So I'm just gonna head back up to the basic adjustments to make a few more adjustments to the image. I wanna make sure that the light here is blending in with the rest of the photo. Okay, so let's head down to the color grading tools. And again, I'm gonna push some uh, warmer tones into the highlights. Um, next up, I'm gonna head into the midtones and bring some blues and some teals into the midtones. So that looks about right and then into the shadows and bring some deeper blues in. So 
So I'm just going to head back up to the basic adjustments that bring some more contrast into the photo. Okay, and then down to the uh, turn curve to add a bit more fade in. Next up, going straight back into color gradient again, and then add some green into the photo. So not that much, but that's the right color. I'm also going to change the color of those lamps because it's a bit too yellow. So I'm going to make them a bit more orange. So I'm liking the look of that so far. I'm going to head down to the effects and bring a vignette into the photo as well. I'm also going to bring some grain in here. So I'm going to move that up to about 25. Maybe that's a bit too much, maybe about 20. Yep, I'm liking the look of that. So yeah, now we're um, pretty much done with this photo as well. I'm just going to make a few minor alterations to it. And uh, for this photo, I'm going to use the adjustment brush and I'm going to use the brush to go over the main subject in this photo. So what I like to do is I press the show selected mask overlay button and then I will just trace over the main subjects in my photo. So for this photo here, we've got the, um, the person walking into the distance and we also have the dog as well. So I'm going to go over both of these using the brush right now. Also, make sure you have the uh, auto mask selected. That just makes it uh, a lot easier to trace around subjects. Okay, so I've used the adjustment brush to highlight my two subjects. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some texture and add a tiny bit of clarity. Reduce the black slightly so it creates some contrast and makes the subject stand out a bit more. Add some more contrast in slightly reduce the contrast on them and also I'm going to add some sharpening. Okay so normally before I export an image I come down to the sharpening tab and I add a bit of sharpening in usually about 40. I don't like to go over the top when it comes to sharpening images and that's just because if you're going for that cinematic film type look you don't want your images to be too sharp and too precise. Okay, so another quick tip, before I ever export a photo and upload it to Instagram, I edit the photo, I leave it for an hour or two, and then I come back to the screen and look at it with fresh eyes. Because normally, there's lots of pins you miss, and because you've been looking at the photo for too long, your eyes have kind of become too familiar with the image, and you're missing all the smaller details which you'd normally see. So just give a break from the image, then come back to it, and then you'll be able to see some elements of the image you want to change or some parts of the photo you want to remove and so on. So for this photo, I'm going to make a few last adjustments before I'm completely finished. Okay, so I'm liking the look of these two photos. When it comes to exporting photos for Instagram, I just head up to export I uh, make sure to resize the short edge to 1080 pixels, set the resolution to 280 and the quality to 80. I also set the uh, sharpening for screen and the amount to high. Basically with these settings, your photo is gonna undergo the least amount of processing and compression from Instagram side. So your photos should look a little bit more crisp and sharp when you upload them. So yeah, let's export those. So that's the steps I go through to make my photos look more cinematic. As I said earlier, I have some presets on sale now. The main reason I use presets is it just speeds up my editing process. So it just gives a good starting point to begin my edits. And that way the photos I upload to Instagram have more of a consistent look to them, which comes in handy when you want to achieve that consistent look and that good looking feed. But um, if you guys have any questions regarding cinematic edits or you have any tips of your own, just drop them down below. I'll make sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed this episode, just hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button too. A massive thanks for watching this episode. And I'll catch you in the next one.